These are beautiful. Thank you immensely. Look at that. Imagine how long this took to paint. I mean, wow, this is so cool, man. Absolutely beautiful. Sorry for the extremely noisy dogs in the background. It's kind of my life. I feel like I live in a dog kennel. camping trip of this terrible, terrible year 2020. Just got here. Don't my tires look good? Brand new after 300, or I mean, not even 10,000 miles. And then uh, we we'll get a bunch of cool nature stuff and some pretty cool camping uh, experiences. I'm okay. You see, is where they had a bunch of wolves. But the wolves kept escaping, you see, and murdering people. So they had to uh, get rid of that, yeah. This is where we clean our fish that we don't catch. Okay. Very low, obviously. Very low right now. Shooting range up here, and then the second gate we need to go through. Okay, this is weird stuff that happens. We're going up a certain spot and it was already taken. So we're turned around, coming back down to go to a different spot. And we're like, hey, how about this one? Like, okay, let's just go there. So I stop, I look out the window because I gotta look at the, cam the uh, camper to back up. And right where I stop at is a smoky quartz rock on the ground. It's just insane, you guys. That's the kind of stuff that happens for me. It's just insane. I mean, it was a crystal at one point, and it can be cut into a crystal again. It's just, that's just so, that's just crazy. Hey, we've got duct tape. Here, here sure is hard to set up. Go like that. Oh, I'm gonna go like this over here. Oh, and it's done. Collect some sap. If you haven't seen the last video, and uh, check this out. Look at this tree right here at our campsite. It's awesome. Mama sap that this bubba is putting down here. We played around with the fire starter once before, but the kids were mostly doing it, so we're gonna actually give it a real chance this time 
and see that you know how easy or are not easy these things are and I just clean the sap off my hand the trick to doing that is just using oil any oil lubricant oil cooking oil I would not recommend motor oil but any oil on your hands and then just wipe it right off sap comes right off like easy like yeah very easy so let's get some dry stuff here and then our paper towels and uh, yeah we'll see how easy it is for the normal idiot uh, I mean I'm sorry for the normal average Joe to just fire going with the uh, flint and steel method yeah All right, so step number one, don't put your foot still in the fire. Yeah. I mean, you, you, yes you can. I recommend that you don't, but you know, whatever. Kibling. Poking this right through the card, or the um, newspaper. In case a little breeze kicks up. I'll keep it. On the ground, and that paper towel there with the oil on it for my hands, it should really help. I would think, anyway, huh? And this stuff here on top is dry because the oil, the ground underneath is actually wet, which is really good because hopefully, we can get some mushrooms. But this stuff on top is dry, so. We really have a big advantage right now because there's no wind, not even a breeze. How about my knife? Super sharp blue knife from that shop would. Away from your little nest, but. with too much stuff here because that flame's going but if I get this guy Weeha Weeha whatever Okay I don't know where to put this camera just keep recording see if oh. the, make sure this is gonna go you know there we go guys do they work absolutely they work it is real it's not just a gimmick and that wasn't even five minutes and I didn't get a ton of magnesium off that block like I could have so it works really good the only thing I'm wondering now is what I did with the little ring that holds them together wow. so yeah it works absolutely guys definitely thank you for filming yeah. who's standing on it? it was right next to me just holds these together a lot of these aspen trees are all connected you know one big huge root system mm -hmm. very cool <laughs> You can see the fire's going. No gasoline. No uh, Indian, Native American trick, as my uncle would call it, with uh, map gas and propane and a torch. Now, what's going on here? I'm going to walk in a second. Let's make sure our fire's going to go here. Doing a preliminary check here for mushrooms. The ground is wet. It's a little early. We're in the middle of July. August, September seems to be better for mushrooms. But um, if it is wet, you know, you've got the right conditions, they will they will come up. So 
Let's see what we can't find here. This is the same forest where I've done the mushroom camping, like Mushroom Forest USA, or whatever I called it. So my seal is all definitely here. All the uh, spores, everything's here. Oh, there's another bone, skull, obviously. Ominous looking, isn't it? Right along the side of the path. It's kind of a kind of a path. Kind of a wannabe uh, game trail, sort of. Easy it could be to get lost if you just don't know where you're at. The camp is just right over there and you can't even see anything or hear anything. This is really pretty. They look white, but there's actually a pinkish color to them. I don't know if you can see it. Definitely got a pink hue to them. But... Yeah, not the sand the mushrooms. Uh, I'll probably head back here in a minute. I'll head back a slightly different way, just about 20 feet up from where I was. Yeah, I guess I'll turn this on if I find anything interesting, okay? Okay. Okay, fire start now. Or should it be done now? Depending where the smoke goes, it's like in between the trees, and there's not a big wind, it, a lot of wind, it looks pretty cool. What are you aiming at? Trees. So what uh, pelican we got there? What's the name of it? Swiss Arms. I don't think it's, it does say Swiss Army. Oh, no, Swiss Arms. Yeah, it says Swiss Arms. I can't hear you. So Swiss Arms, it's supposed to be like 1600 feet per second, which it's not, I'm sure. And that's fine. It is actually a really awesome little gun, though. It works, it works pretty good. And they're not expensive and you don't need CO2 cartridges. I'm actually pretty impressed with it. And I've talked to two different people who ha have them and have had them for a while. They said the same thing, you know? So yeah, it is definitely a good little gun. It's a brake barrel, obviously. So charging it, charging the air into the piston is just simply by bending the barrel down and putting it back up. It goes through a fence, you know that for sure. Yeah. Pert's holes clear through a uh, cedar f uh, fence, so. Cool, I wanna shoot it a little bit. Okay. okay. So I'm putting a blade on this, putting an edge on it. They're very, very dull, I don't know if you can see. And um, it's an awesome test for this little thing because it's an extremely dull knife, I'm not even like, 
sharpening. I'm basically creating the blade. And I've only done 15 or 20 passes on that. Pressing down pretty hard, pulling it that way, and it is absolutely working. And I didn't really think it was going to, so it is working really good, actually. I don't think when you're doing this kind of a blade, it really matters which way. You know, this is harder for me with this thing, so this just feels a lot better. And like I said, it is working, so. Probably good to have a knife. Not super sharp when you're learning to throw them because they will hurt you. So I'm not going to sharpen all of them, but I'm going to at least just do this one edge here. You get what you get here, guys. I don't go on other channels and research how to do stuff. I just try it on my own and let you know what works and what doesn't. You can pretty easily see which side has the edge on it now. All right, here, see if you can tell which one I sharpened. I didn't even do the fine yet, so it's not sharp, sharp. It's really not even sharp, but this side? we'll feel it. Well, yeah, you're right, so you could already see it, but can you feel it and see? Jeez, yeah, this one's like a wall. Yeah, big difference, huh? Yeah. This thing works, man. It's like five bucks. Absolutely works wow. good. Works amazingly well, actually. And I did, per I did find putting it at an angle worked better than going straight with it. So actually at an angle like that worked really, really good. You what? can actually see some shavings it was even taking off. Were you even able to do that with it? When you were doing it? Couldn't do anything with it. Well, the, it had a point on it, so I mean, maybe, but you couldn't cut a damn thing with it. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to put the, uh, put the actual fine uh, edge side on it now and see. This thing's actually really impressive. You can really feel it. Like it feels good. You know, it feels like it's really working. What's up? Yes. Geeking out over gadgets. Geeking out over gadgets. That's a good channel name, but it's already a channel name. It is? I'll wait here a little bit and see what the rain does. The rain lets up and go on the ride if you want. Okay. Alright, so we're just walking. I just found a cool bottle here. It's not colored. I don't really think it's got significant age to it, but it is always cool to find bottles. You know, some people collect them. This is 1818 on it. And we've got a whiskey sign here. St. Pierre Smirnoff. So yeah, this probably isn't very old, but yeah, I don't know, maybe. It's still kind of cool. I'll take it back and put flowers in it or something. So I want to show you that. And then the knife that I'm totally geeked out on the, uh, gosh, it's so sharp now. The uh, sharpener I bought. So watch what I can do. Let me find some blades of grass that aren't. Right, let's do this one. And cut it. Clean cut. The sharpest in the world, but it's definitely sharp. Cool. Let's grab that bottle there behind you. It's always fun finding bottles. Some people look for bottles out in the woods, you know? Just like how people go metal detecting. Yeah. Other people actually look for bottles. And it's funny, Antiques Roadshow, there were some that are like $20,000 for a bottle. It's just amazing, you know? What's so, yeah. I don't know, just wood. Looks like uh, bark, isn't it bark? I don't know. Let's see. I have a bunch of these bottles in my room. Oh well, yeah, I don't know. Different colors. It's weird. Yeah, we found some bottles up here. Same area. Oh, looks like my ceiling. Some old, dried up mold, I'm not sure. Just don't uh, drop it, okay? Anyway, we were looking for a cool place to build a little fort, so. I just wanted to do a little update on that knife. A throwing knife that is now a shop a throwing knife at least on one side and um the bottle we found so this flower here is already bent over something broke it so since it's already broke 
There's a start. I'll let you know if we find anything interesting. Not the most, uh, not the most exciting thing, but uh, I've got an old can. Just at least shows you there is, there is some age to the area. Some old timers are up here, so you just never know. Yeah. It looked like a possible prospector dig, but I think it's just a bunch of debris and rocks and stuff. Yeah, it just fell from an old tree from down there. That looked like maybe it was like dug out back here, but yeah. Up here. All right, so me and my eagle vision just found some amazing flowers. Just kidding. He found them. I'm going to make sure that my bed is a good to the red day for the night time. And as you can see, it is very dark. And we've got this little light here. And I don't know if you can see a little bit of light there for the door. And we've got this. And I'm like, well, you know, I can turn this on. It's a little flashlight. And it's like, yeah, that helps. It's still kind of dark. You know, I want to make my bed, which is over here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got this new headlamp that I want to try out and I didn't even remember that I had it on because I put it on earlier because I wanted to try it and it was just getting dark and I didn't want to forget later when it got dark I can't even feel that I had the thing on I completely forgot so it's pretty comfortable and uh, there's the first setting second third very bright I mean look at this Yeah, it's just awesome. So here it is. Ding, ding, ding. If I go up like that, you know, it's lighting up everything. I mean, I don't even want to use it as a headlamp. I could just take it off and set it here and have it going off the top of the trailer. I mean, look, it just puts this thing to shame. It's awesome. This <laughs> is so helpful. And the fact that it has three different settings, see, this is the smallest one. And then you can adjust it like this. That's simple. I don't even need to like unlock anything or look at it or take it off. You know, I can just simply, it's got a cool little uh, catch system on it there. So I can just put it down. It's extremely helpful. I mean, it's just extremely helpful. You know, I've never really had a headlamp before. Greg has had some. And, um,. So I gave him one of these to try. It could come in a two-pack. I just love it. It's so cool. Especially as being a rock hound, like, wherever I look, you know, it's lit up. And it's super bright. And if I had an emergency, it's got a uh, flash mode. And again, see if I put it up on there, like on the top of the trailer, it just lights everything up. Anyway, just me geeking out again over cool stuff that i love um but yeah i came in here to get my uh, bed ready so i'm gonna get that ready i couldn't see anything now i can